Hey everybody, it's Claire. Welcome back to another Web Dev Wednesday. So last week I sort of jumped the gun and applied a grid layout to the sample website we've been working on. And I'll link that video down below, but I kind of recommend looking at that after this one because today I'm gonna sort of break down grid and sort of demonstrate what we can do with it before applying it to our actual site. I probably should have started with this, but we, we were on a roll with our sample site. So I thought it would be neat to see what we could do with it there, but anyway, the first thing you got to know about grid is it is a display property in CSS. So typically what you're going to want to do is put all of the items that you want to organize on your grid into one big container div and then apply the display grid like this to that container div. Okay. And then today there's, there's, there's a lot you can do with grid. But today I'm going to focus on a few of these properties here. These top two ones are what you could apply to the container in general. You apply a template to the container and then whatever your styles you apply there apply to the whole grid. And it's, it's a good way to sort of get an even, even spacing that way. And we used grid template areas in the example video, the demo that I talked about that will be linked below. Um, but before I show you areas, um, there is another way to control specific elements in your grid and how how far they stretch and how they're positioned and things. And that's grid column and grid row. So we're going to go over those as well. And then grid area is what you apply to the items in your grid. And then you pop back up to your container and you do grid template areas with the assigned name of the area down here. And this will make a lot more sense when we get into the code. So why don't we go ahead and do that? Let's get out of here. So this is a new just sample website. I'll show you what I did over here. Um, I have a div called container and inside that container we have a div called header that just says my website in it. We have a div called main that has three paragraphs, just a filler text. And then we have a div called aside and there is an unordered list as like a nav here. And then there's also a div footer that just has some dummy text in it there. And that's it. That's the whole thing. And I'm going to put the styles up here in the head of our HTML instead of linking to an external style sheet, just so I'm not clicking around quite as much since this has some content that ties between the two here. Okay. But as you can see, this is ugly as heck as we've seen with basic HTML, it's not very good looking. So the first thing I'm going to do is target each um, div down here, which will become our grid items and just give them a color and some padding just so we can see what we're doing here as we're working on it. So I'm going to start by targeting that header there. I'm going to give it a background color. We'll just do like a gray and then for the aside, let's give it a background color as well. Um, I guess we'll just do a slightly different gray. Um, for our main div, we're going to give it a background color of just, I guess, a different. Let's just, let's go down. Let's do 333. Three, three, and then for footer, again, I'm just going to make this one match the header. Save this. Um, I'm going to target all of the div children of that container and just give them all padding of like 2%. Okay. Looks nice. I dig it. Okay. Doesn't look nice, but at least we can see what we're doing now. Okay. And I think that's about it for individual elements. So like I said, the first thing you want to do with grid is target your container, which we have conveniently named container and give it the display of grid. If we save this and refresh, nothing's changed because we haven't really applied anything to this. So I think the best way to get started is just do some grid template columns. And this, I think I talked about a little bit in last week's video, but here, you know, you can tell it to do, you know, two 50% columns. If we refresh that, it put this first element in our grid as 50%. Then 
the second one is 50% and then it just pops it down. And the, the heights of the rows here just depend on the content. Obviously we could set that too. I think that'll be a later video though. I just kind of want to talk about layout in this one. Um, so we could do, you know, 70% and 30%. And as you'd expect, it just takes the first item, makes it that width, the second one fills it in and then continues down below. It doesn't have to be two though. We can do 30%, 30%, and let's start with 40%. So this is gonna have three columns, the first one being a little bit wider than the other ones. As you can see, it does it, and then it just pops that fourth item down below. Um, you know, you can definitely do percents, you can do pixels, you can do any unit you want here, but there's a new unit with grid that's kind of exciting, and that's our fractional unit. And it's cool because you don't really need to keep track of your percentages or your total viewport or anything like that, it'll, the browser will calculate it for you. So what I mean by that is, look, I can just do one fraction, one fraction. This is going to be the same as our 50%, 50%. And if I add a third fraction, it's going to do it in thirds. Say I want the middle one to be wider, I can just pop it in and this just means it'll be three times as wide as the items on either side of it. So that's a really cool feature of grid. Um, and while we're in here in the container, I'm going to just apply a gap. You can do grid column gap or grid row gap. I'm just going to do grid gap. It'll apply both between the columns and between the rows. Um, and I'm just going to do 10 pixels so we can get a little wiggle room here. And it auto measures, adjusts with the fractions. So grid is really nice that it does a lot of the measurements for you and lets you sort of focus on your design rather than all these numbers and having to make everything fit and things like that. Um, okay, here's another thing, cool thing you can do with grid. So let's go back to our thirds here. Um, since these fractions are all the same, we don't have to do one fraction, one fraction, one fraction. We can do this cool little function looking thing called repeat. And then we say how many times we want it to repeat, comma, and then the unit that you want it to repeat. And this doesn't have to be fractions, but it makes sense to do it as fractions. Like we said, since we have the power to do that with grid, I would stick to fractions. Same thing if we want it to be four. So this is the equivalent of one fraction, one fraction, one fraction, one fraction. It does it that way too. You know, you can alternate two. We can alternate one fraction, two fraction, twice. I don't think I even have enough items to do this. Oh yeah, I do. So this is, this item is one fraction wide. This one is two. And then since we said repeat twice, it does it again where it's one and then two. So this is a cool little built-in function for grid templates that is pretty nifty. All right. Um, all right, so we want to style this web page as you'd expect one to look. So I want this header to be, you know, all the way across, my main content in the middle, the footer on the bottom, and an aside either on the left or the right. And what's cool about grid is we can put it on the left or the right without using float and having to worry about it affecting the content around it too much, which is really quite neat. So in this example, we're not going to use the template applied to the whole container anymore. This is, so now all we have, it is display grid, but we haven't really applied any grid styles. We do have our gap, um, but this is just, it's putting the elements in order that they are in, in our document down here. Um, and when you're using grid column and grid row, you apply them right to the grid element that you want. And you're going to just tell this item how far in the grid to extend. So. This um, takes a concept into account called, um, it's lines, it's just grid lines. So um, say our row lines, this is line one, two, probably three and four in here, but um, I should actually, I'm gonna find um, a good visual that'll help me explain um, what I mean about lines. Okay, so this is what I was talking about. In this grid, the line, so our column lines are one, two, three and four. Our row lines are one, two, three, and four. And when we are telling our items, say I want this one to be, all right, grid column one, two, four. So this means start on line one and on line four. It would be the whole width of this, right? Line one to two, two to three, three to four. 
and you can do that with rows as well. So grid row, say I want it to be from one to two, that's just this one cell row here. So if we were applying this to this grid, the header item would span this whole thing. Okay, just so you have a visual of what I mean by lines when I'm using this notation here with grid column and grid row. So back to our actual site. Um, I mean, we can go ahead and save this and apply it. It's going to span this over three wide, and it's doing it over the rest of the content that we haven't really assigned grid column and grid row yet. Um, I think I might span it to five, and another nice thing about grid, it kind of just auto-creates however many rows you're telling it to. Actually, let's do six. Let's make this nice and wide. Okay. And I don't even need to do grid row, or you could just do one and it knows to start on line one. I don't think I need that at all for what I wanna do. It'll automatically just fill one. Okay, so then let's target our aside now. The grid column we want it to span is just one to two. So we could do one to two or just one. And it's skinny, it's bumping these over. I gotta tell it how far grid row Let's do two to four, right? Because the header goes from one to two. We wanna start on two and pop it down to the bottom. There it is. Now let's target our main. We're gonna give this a grid column from two to six. Save that, it'll be, yep, the rest of the width. And then to tell it how far down to go, we'll add a grid row of two to four. It'll be the same height as the aside, see? And then for the footer, grid column one, two, six as well. It's gonna be the same length as the header. There it is, and grid row. I wonder if this matters. We can do four to five or just four. Yeah, it'll automatically do it. The same way we don't really need a grid row on the top, we don't need it on the bottom. You can include it. It might be a good practice in case you add more elements later, but it's not necessary. So there you have it. By using grid and telling our items how far to span, we can just get it all done with grid. And like I said, this aside here, we can pop it onto the other side pretty easily. So it would be column five, right? And then the main, we would just move from two to six to one to five, so it ends before the aside there. If we save this, the aside is just popped over to the other side. Kind of neat that we don't have to order our elements in our markup the same way we wanna order it in styling. We can use grid to pop it around while leaving it in a syntactic order this way pretty neat. Um, so that covers sort of the column and row within our item, but um, I want to use grid template areas because that is the example I use when we have our sample website in last week's video. So let's take out these column, columns and rows. Save that. We should be back to our regular order. Correct. So for grid areas, we just want to go into each of these elements the grid elements and name them how we want to reference them up here in the container. So you'll see what I mean once I get going. So this grid area, we're just gonna call header. These are gonna be pretty pretty simple here. Grid area side. This one will be grid area main. And you guessed it, grid area footer. So nothing's changed, they just have extra names and they're overlapping because we didn't tell them how to be. So here's where we're gonna do grid template areas to the container. So it has the display grid and we're gonna tell it the template we want. And I'm just gonna space this out so you can see what I'm talking about. I want three rows and the order you put them in has to be in these single ticks and with semicolon like any property. Okay, so we want this top row to be the header. Um, 
Let's do it four times so that down here we can do the aside as one and then main as three. So this is the columns. It's like the equivalent of four columns, saying this header is going to span all four columns. We could have done six like we did before. It would just been a side, a side, and then four mains, but this should be this pretty much the same effect we want. And then our footer is also going to span all four columns. Okay, and if we save this, we have the layout we wanted. And this is kind of cool to me because it really, it's almost a visual representation of what it's going to look like. You know, just naming the areas and then applying that here. And you know, if we wanted the aside to go down, I think we could do it this way, right? So the aside takes up part of this and part of this row. Yeah, check it out. Pretty cool. I mean, we could take it even all the way up the side of the page this way, right? And this is, like I said, sort of a visual representation where the aside is on the side. The header and the main are over here and the footer so these should all be in line and we refresh and it does it anyway guys that's about it for my intro to css grid here like i mentioned i might do future videos just going more into detail on how to control things like the row height and how to justify your grid elements but for now i think this is a good overview and if this makes sense to you go ahead and watch the video i made last week applying css grid template areas to the sample website we've been working on. I hope you found this helpful. Thank you for watching, you guys. Uh, remember, I post new videos every single Wednesday, so I will see you next week. Bye, you guys.